So now we're going to take a look at the microbit web page that BBC has and what we can find on that web page and also dive into having a look at different uh, editors for the microbit. Mm -hmm. So should we get started on just having a look at the uh, microbit web page, which you would find at microbit.co.uk. Mm -hmm. On here, we have a bunch of different things uh, to start out with. We have a uh, a top list with uh, uh, the first and most obvious part of obviously is creating code oh. uh, because we want to create code with the editor on the computer and then get it over to the microbit. Yeah. So when you go into create code, you will find the four editors that are available on this website. Uh, and these different editors and how they work, we'll come back to that in yeah. uh, in just a second. Yeah. But uh, on the web page, uh, as you said, Nils, there's you can find four of them. So what else do we have on the start page of the microbit? Uh, well, if you look in the menu, there's also a getting started button. And in there, you'll find a lot of instruction videos on how to do certain things with your microbit and how to yeah get started. Uh, and uh, this is a good place to start if you also just want to get a sense of what this project is. There's quite mm -hmm. a broad variety of, of uh, material there under that link. Mm -hmm. Then uh, to the right of that, there's a link for teachers and parents, uh, uh, which is more of an instructional uh, part of uh, the web page, uh, addressing sort of issues around how to use this platform in a, in a teacher context. If we go back to the, uh, to the first page again, down below we uh, have this uh, small box mm -hmm. uh, where it says discover everything. And this is one of the places that I find to be most fun to start out with uh, if I want to sort of have a project running because here I can find projects on different categories. So for example, if I uh, click on the makes uh, button I'll find a bunch of short how-to instructions to do all kinds of different makes. Uh, so for example, if I click on this one, bring a tale to life with an animated storybook, uh, I'll get a step-by-step -step, step instruction. And I also get to see sort of how complex it is to actually do this, how long time it is estimated to do, and I also get a parts list. Yeah. So there's quite a lot of nice stuff here to, to get started, uh, not only with a microbit, but with sort of using it in a context. Yeah. So what do you say, Nils? Should we take a look, uh, if we go back uh, to the first page and go to the create code mm -hmm. and have a look at these four uh, editors? Different editors, yes. So the first one, the Code Kingdom's JavaScript editor. Uh, what, what is this all about? Uh, as you can see, this editor looks very much like a block editor, but the difference is that here on the blocks, it's actually written uh, in JavaScript. Uh, and now, yeah, so here you are coding by dragging together blocks. Yeah, so I can, I can actually drag the blocks. I can choose to write something, in, a, in this case, a string of letters uh, yeah. to say something. Uh, but there's this slider down below. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the cool thing with this editor uh, is the slider in the bottom where you can change from a block editor to a full text uh, JavaScript editor. And you'll see it's exactly the same code that you've been coding before, but it's displayed in different ways. So here you can see how the code you are creating is actual uh, text-based code. Uh, and you can work in whichever uh, mode you like best. Yeah, so I can start with uh, dragging blocks, and then I can have a look how it, how it is, or I could just actually work in the JavaScript yeah. version. Yeah. We also have a more pure block editor that is more like Scratch uh, or other types of similar block mm -hmm. editors. And it's, mm -hmm. uh, to my notion, it's a bit more clean. I mean, mm -hmm. if you want to sort of just get started and you haven't programmed at all before, this is probably where you would start. Yeah, yeah. And just as with Scratch, it's very easy to start on a low level, and you get, can become fairly complex, mm -hmm. I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, but obviously not that as complex as if you are writing uh, more pure code. Text-based code. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we can have a look at the next editor to start with and see what that is all about. This one, the... Um, touch develop. Touch editor. develop. And what is this all about? Uh, so this one is uh, designed to be used on touch screens like iPads or uh, Android phones or tablets, that kind of stuff. 
Uh, and you can see it, it has really big buttons, so it works to press with like a big finger on the screen. So this one would be the editor of choice if I'm on a tablet. Yeah, well, it also works with the block editor, but you might like this because of the big buttons. Then a fourth editor mm -hmm. uh, that is a bit different from these is the uh, Python editor. Mm -hmm. Python is a programming language, mm. and uh, in this editor, you write Python, basically. Yeah, so this is a more uh, standard kind of uh, editor as you would uh, see uh, in everyday programming uh, all around the world, uh, where you write it as text, as code. So here, um, it's a bit more of a challenge because you don't have the menu that, sh that shows all your options here. You actually need to know what, what am I going to write. And all of these four editors, they're in the browser. Yeah. So all. I need internet, and I work in the browser, and I do my code there. And then when I have done my code and I've uh, tested or verified my code, I compile it and send it over to the Raspberry or to the uh, microbit. microbit. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, these are the four uh, editors you would find on the microbit web page, mm -hmm. but we. Uh, this is an open software hardware project, and you've uh, had a look around the net and found other editors that are also good. Yeah, so there are two more that we want to show. Uh, the first one is called uh, codethemicrobit.com. And as you see, it's also a block editor. It looks very similar to the previous block editor we saw. The two differences that uh, this one has a bit more uh, blocks in the menu. And it uh, has a JavaScript button on the top. So if you click that one, you switch from a block editor to a JavaScript editor. And it's the same coding that you've been doing. So you can actually switch back and forth and code in whichever uh, mode that you like best. So uh, if you're into sort of wanting to have a bit more progression from your block editing and transgress into pure code, this is probably a nice option. Mm. Then. Uh, a final sixth editor is uh, one that, that you would find at code with mu, mm -hmm. code with dot mu. And this one is a bit different from the others because you actually download it. Yeah, so the, the big thing with this one is that it's a, a software you install, you download, uh, so you don't run it as a website, meaning you don't need internet uh, all the time when you're using it. And it's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. And if we download it and mm. install it, uh, it uh, would look something like this. So it's yeah. also a Python editor. Yeah. And it's basically quite similar to the web-based Python editor that we saw previously. Yeah. But with the difference, obviously, being that this is on the computer, not on the web. Yeah. So as we've seen, there's a bunch of different editors, and there's quite a lot of material on the Microbit web page to uh, dive into once you have your microbit and want to start doing your projects. Uh, so uh, enjoy and find the editor of your choice for your projects.